Welcome back, guys. I'm Matt. I'm Jimmy. We are Two Average Guys. Um, Coming to you live outdoors today. Decided to take the show outside. It's a nice day out. Um, you know, just really trying to relax after a grueling season. A grueling season, yes. A grueling season is probably the best way to uh, describe it. So, best, um, uh, best nine, uh, three and nine team in the history of best uh, three and nine in the history of college, college football. football. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So, anyways. Hope you guys are having a good Sunday. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Um, we know Black Friday didn't go the way we wanted it to, but glad you're here. Yes. Are you drinking to celebrate the season being over? Because I sure as hell am. Hey, Casey, yes. Uh, we drink every show. Um, so, yes and no, I guess. Hopefully you guys can hear us okay. Yep, this hopefully you can hear us all right. thing, but uh, it's nice out. Dog's got his paper bag on, all right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, you know, really just wanted to wind down the season here. Um, first of all, I just say thanks to everybody that's tuned in all year. Stuck with us. <laughs> stuck with the team. Stuck with us. Stuck with the team. Um, it was not easy. Uh, not an easy season going 3-9. and nine. Definitely not what we anticipated. There was a lot of good. We, saw a lot of, we saw a lot of good things. Um, but there was a lot of rough as well. Top 20 defense, top 20 offensive statistically, at least going yeah. into this week. I don't know this last name. I don't know what it is now, but. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, things just didn't roll our way this year. Uh, we had a lot of uh, things go really wrong, including special teams. Uh, yes. I think that was probably our biggest, biggest flaw all year. Um, Even, you know, making some changes with the coaching staff, I think we actually offensively might have been a little better after that. But we were the same, if not worse, on special teams, which is really hard to even say because we were that bad before. Yeah, well, and, you know, a lot of people, we had the uh, bench bench 2 a.m. Uh, crew that were all about, you know, get Martinez out of there, get Smothers in, let his season get started. Um, yes, it was his first start, but we had safety. Um, had a fumble. Had a fumble. We had interception. We had the punt, the punt block for a touchdown. Still, I mean, we still had the same mistakes happen. Right. No, it does, I don't think it matters who was at quarterback. Right. And I, tell, I, you know, I said that to somebody. I said, you know, the the mistakes that Smothers made were very much identical to what Martinez would do yeah. in a crucial part of the game. So I don't know that it really mattered <laughs> who was back there. I did like Smothers. I mean, obviously, didn't uh, have quite the passing type of playbook options as yeah. we had with Martinez. I mean, he only threw, what, maybe 15 passes or something. He he was, uh, you know, didn't have an incompletion until the fourth quarter. Yeah. But he was only like 10 of 10, so. Yeah, I mean, it, I wasn't. Um, and he ran the ball well. Made good decisions. <laughs> I mean, the for, first real mistake was, you know, a, a safety and then a fumble. But yeah. What um, do we got for comments? Case uh, counted 21 points that I was scored on special teams when he's a damn special teams coach. Um, I think that's been the glaring answer for, for weeks now, uh, going back to probably week one, where we we started failing on extra points and field goals from week one, and that was one of those things where we just noticed right away, like, holy cow, like what happened to our special teams from last year, which, again, was not stellar last year, but we were making field goals and extra points. We, yeah, we had the Big Ten kicker of the year that was non-existent this year, except to maybe cost us a game or two. Yeah, so... Um, I think that's very obvious. Donnie, go Cubbies. Um, yeah, I was wearing a, a shirt of a team that I think has potential of doing something special this year. <laughs> you know, we, we wanted to wear a shirt uh, of the team that's not that has not or will not let us down this weekend, so I chose the Cubs because at least I got maybe seven months before I'm let down by them. Uh, I think um, the Habs are on like a seven-game win streak or something like that, so yeah. that's why I'm repping out. So I feel better. Um, I'm ready to move on to next year. Um, I do think, talking about this last game against Iowa, I think there's no doubt that we are better than they are. We just were not, we didn't We didn't show our special well, teams again. And I mean, you could say that about the majority of the teams we played. I mean, you watched that Ohio State-Michigan game yesterday. It's probably one of the biggest, better games of the entire season. And you know, we lost by a combined 12 points to those teams. Yeah, you know, I I I think Michigan's going to be a playoff team. I think they're going to beat Iowa, and we were at that game. I thought that that was one that we easily should have won. Yeah, 
Um, Dan said, you know, Frost got out coached again. Um, yes and no. Uh, again, it wasn't. I mean, yeah, our offense kind of floundered. I, I think they changed our we changed our offensive scheme in the second half. Um, a lot of people said, well, Iowa's DB started playing the option, but we just stopped it. They weren't stopping us. We stopped it instead of just let's keep running it until they stopped us. Well, that's and, what great things, great teams are going to keep doing what works until you're stopped. And well, we just stopped it. And I, I think that their quarterback, so Dan, yes, on that, their quarterback that played the first half, I feel like was probably a better quarterback than Petrus. Not against us, but in, in, in they're, general. Yeah, but they're they both, both pretty, were really bad. They're both pretty even they as far both as the bad. suck and I'm, goes. I, I know that they just won the, the Big Ten West, and thanks to us and thanks to Wisconsin, <laughs> somehow losing. Minnesota can beat Nebraska and Wisconsin at home, but lose to Bowling Green. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, there. All right. Okay. So I had to plug something back in. Um, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's just frustrating. Again, I, I thought I thought after the first half. Again, I, I think Logan looked good, um, but I just I think we need a quarterback that's going to we need a quarterback that's going to be able to stay in the pocket. We, these dual threat quarterbacks don't work for every team and every system. Right. In the Big Ten, it, it doesn't always work, and it hasn't worked for Nebraska with Martinez. Um, and I think we need someone who's more of a pure passer, but can also run the ball. We, yeah. don't, we haven't had a pure passer that could also run the ball. It's always been they're a lot better running the ball than they are passing the ball. But well, they can throw it, but they're just better running. Yeah, and, you know, you watched, again, you watched that Ohio State-Michigan game, and, you know, C.J. Stroud, just his, his pocket passer, great. And they got great weapons at wide receiver. Um, you know, Michigan had their run game that was, that was cool yesterday. Oh, yeah. So yeah. That, that, you know. Well, we know McNamara's so not a runner. He's really not. Well, and, great. But he made plays when he needed to. Yeah. Well, and, and, and you know, Stroud. Big throws. Stroud took a lot of flack for his comment post game. Um, one of the games where they barely won, I think, and he I said, mean, "You know, I'm, I'm not, not a runner. I'm not a it's runner. Not my job to run. It's not my job to run." And he's not wrong. They don't pay me to run. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Something like that. But essentially, like, it's not his job to run. And that's not wrong. I mean, he's there to pass the ball and distribute the ball. That's his job as a quarterback. You distribute. When you have to run, you take down a run, and he will, just like any other quarterback. But. I think we have to have somebody that comes in and is able to throw the ball. I feel like Harburg is that guy. I think he yeah. also can run, but I think he's more of a passer than he is, than Logan Smothers is as far as arm strength and accuracy. Well, and you know it would have been interesting if because uh, we didn't even see him. Did we even see him in the Fordham game? Mm. I thought maybe if the game was a little bit out of hand, you know, the other way that yeah. he may have we may have seen him in the second half at some point, but. Obviously, up twenty-one to six, that wasn't going to happen. And then, I mean, the game was in our hands until that block punt. It was, and it was, and that just goes back to what we've said almost every week this year. You just have to get a special teams coordinator. I don't care how much you have to pay him. And again, we, I saw it all week. It's kind of funny. I saw it all weekend on special teams and a lot of different football games where we talked about it more and more. But why are we still catching the ball inside the ten yard line? If it's inside the 10-yard line, you're standing at the 10-yard line. If it's behind you, you come up a couple yards, you wave your hand for a fair catch, and get the hell out of the way. And if they down it or at the block, one, whatever. if they down it at the one, then congratulations, good for them. it's a great kick. And do what you can. But if you catch it at the four, then you're just basically giving that up to start it at the four. Yep. Whereas if you don't, then it could end up in the end zone and you start at the 20. And there's just little things that go a long way, yeah. field position wise, or you know, trying to return a kickoff. Yeah, which we I think we've been better about not doing, but every now and again we will to like the 14, and you're like, yeah. why? Well, and, and here, here's the thing again too. You look at who Iowa is, who Wisconsin is, and typically who Northwestern is. You are clock managers. Yeah. You're not explosive. You play good defense. You're disciplined. You don't have a lot of penalties, and you win field position. Right. And we gave them field position well, all game. The announcers were even saying, you know, it's 21 to six. This is not really the type of game that Iowa, that Iowa plays in. You know, so, yeah. or wants to play it, and then you get a block punt for a touchdown, and then it's like, here we go. Yeah. And then you get a fumble, and then you get a safety, or you know, combination of things. It's like, yeah, all that leads to a a loss. Yeah. Every time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we got some questions, some uh, conversation going back and forth about an offense coordinator for next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and we talked about it last week on our show. Like, we haven't really been, we haven't really looked into it, uh, paying paying attention to it much. Um, 
William says, you know, Darren Shiverini from uh, offense coordinator for, for the Buffaloes. Um, could be, you know, former uh, offense coordinator for Colorado. Um, again, I, I think there, there's probably a lot of really good names out there that are in consideration, that are already being talked about, talked Possibly. to. Um, I just oh, want, I'm sure they, they've, they've been in communication. I, I just want course. someone to come in and be able to take away the play calling from Scott Frost. Again, I thought he did a good job calling plays in the first half. In the second half, it's like, what are we doing? Yeah. Why, why did we stop doing what was working? And um, we kind of went, you know, more uh, vanilla in the second half, which didn't, which isn't going to do anything against. Well, uh, and you got a lead, and you come out in the first couple drives, you don't really move the ball, or yeah. you know, it, just yeah, it's frustrating. All, all kinds of different things that get frustrating, and that seemed to be kind of a a trend this year that mm -hmm. you know even if things looked pretty good and then everything was said you know going into halftime yeah you know we need to do this we need to do that and we come out and yeah look flat well again it's it's been a game of um lack of adjustments for nebraska um whether it's first half adjustments when we see something that maybe we didn't expect or second half adjustments when things aren't going well or things are going well and either continue to do those things or make some changes i mean we just we don't know how to make adjustments. We didn't know how to do it with um, uh, with Bo Pelini. We didn't know how to do right. it with Mike Riley. We have not been able to do it with Bill Callahan. I feel like this is just a trend that we've seen for so many years of making adjustments at halftime to do better and put your foot on someone's neck. I just right. we've never we just don't do that. We should have been able to put our foot on that on the Hawkeyes neck and won that game. And I, you know and we didn't it do could it. Just be you know you got guys that have been here for five six years and they've never been able to do it. And they've just fallen into that, you know, kind of rut every single yeah. time they get a lead, or you know, like, uh, oh, what, you know, what can go wrong? What's going to happen this time? Yep. And then it happens, or as opposed to just let's make sure that this doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. let's just freaking put it to them, yeah. and don't put ourselves in a spot where things can happen. I mean, the one thing that could possibly happen is a momentum switch on a punt. You can't have it blocked. I don't care if you have to have everybody in tight. They're yep. gonna be bringing the house to try to get something going because yep. their offense couldn't do anything. Yeah, I mean, and was, not only that, the the first few possessions that they had that they got points on, we should have had interceptions like the play before. We missed three interceptions. Three. three. So that was yeah. huge too. And I mean, props to the guys for being in the right place. That's why they're on defense and not on offense. But you gotta, like, catch, you that gotta ball. catch the ball. Once in That's huge. Like that. I mean, again, in a game like that, again, teams, teams, the teams that we played in the Big Ten, they catch those. Those are catches. Those are potentially pick sixes. We we talked about it. Uh, I think I talked to you about it the other day. I think uh, Dirk Shatlin put this up here on Twitter and said that um, in Big Ten play, the amount of points that we scored is also the amount of points that we gave. We did. Up. It was. Um, it flattened out to zero. It was like forty. What did we, we beat? 58 or 56 to 7 against Northwestern, yeah. so we won by 49. We were plus 49 in that game and minus 49 in, in yeah. the other yeah. eight games, which, you know, minus 49. Well, in, in great, between, between special teams that's a touchdown and, game, and turnovers, special teams and turnovers that we had, Less than um, it was like a 43 or 52 points total that the other teams were getting based off of missed field goals, missed extra points. Um, and then the turnovers by our quarterbacks and running backs and, and whatnot. But then you also got to add in our defense gave us zero points on it. We didn't have a scoop and score. We didn't have a pick six. Oh, really? We didn't have any blocked anything for field goals I mean, or for touchdowns. So I guess I didn't realize that. We didn't have any turnovers for points. Those That's what's going to make uh, Just good that teams, much of a difference. Good when, you lose, when you lose by three, six, seven, eight, nine yeah. points every game. Yeah. I mean, Even you, though the defense played well most of the season. If, if you season. if you watch that that Michigan and Ohio State game yesterday, we lost to those two teams by nine by twelve points combined. Right. And I'm watching that game. I'm like, damn, this is a good game. We could have been here. Like we could have been at this level playing for the Big Ten championship. Right. We went over our our picks at the going end of the year. going against uh, you know maybe a, a, a rematch with one of those two teams. Yeah. I mean, we won one of our picks at the beginning of the year, and I'm and we were laughing because I'm like, I went down the list. I'm like, shit, I have nine and three. Right, we were which is hilarious. Yeah, yes, but at the same time, look at our games. We could have been nine and three or better if it weren't for those mistakes that we made. Those little one-time yeah. mistakes. I mean, mistakes. It, it, and we can kind of go down the line, but starting with that Illinois game, I mean, a Martinez.
fumbled touchdown before the half. I mean, it just kind of started the season off with a bang, if you will. And, yep. you know, then a, an eight-point loss in a game that no one in the world thought that we should lose. Yep. And then, you know, the Oklahoma debacle of, a, you know, blocked extra point taken back for two and a yep. couple missed field goals. You know, in the game. I can go through every game, but... Yeah, it just fine. seemed like it didn't start out on a great foot. Yeah, and both both Ross and Casey here said, you know, that, that block pound was game changer and that, that changed the game. And I, I don't think anybody, any Husker fan at that point after that block punt, when we're still up by five points, was sitting there saying, we're still going to win the game. It was. It's, here hard we go. To, it's hard to say that. Here we go. What else can go wrong? Yep. And it snowballed. Yeah. And so it just kind of, you know, again, we've talked about culture so much uh, this year. A lot of people say that that's Scott Frost culture is a culture of losing. That's not culture. It doesn't come down to wins and losses. Culture starts from the ground up. Starts with that foundation that he had to rebuild. And again, it's been talked about over and over again. But he's built that culture back up. The kids love him. They want to play for him. They're fighting every single game. If the culture was bad, we would have been blown out in some of those games. We would have rolled over and died against Wisconsin. We would have rolled over and died against Michigan when they're up by what ten and a half. I mean. Those those kind of games, those are culture killers where the teams just don't come out and play. Look what happened to Florida this year. Those did, those did kids, they, did they win? Those yesterday? I don't even care. Those kids gave up on Dan Mullen. Yeah, and it lost him his job. They did. Those kids gave up I, on him. I think not because he's a bad coach. I want to say they won yesterday. Florida State sucks. So I mean, but they were both five and six teams going for a bowl win. No, I think Florida won because Florida State no, effed I, up their uh, their right, kick. Yeah, right. I yeah. think Florida won, but that that's a little different because it's a yep. you know kind of a rivalry type game. Yeah. Just like John, just like Jonathan said, yeah, Jonathan. So you look at Florida, um, you look at other teams, Florida State, Miami. I mean, the whole state of Florida is a mess right now. Right. But those those are coaches who have not built the culture for this kid to fight and play for their coaches, and that's what these players are doing. They're playing for themselves, well, but also for the coaches. What's, what's funny is, you know, after last season, I think it was last season, if not the season. Well, maybe not last season because it was COVID year. But anyway. Florida had like a ten and two season, maybe uh-huh. two seasons ago. It went to like a, a New Year's Six Bowl. Yeah. I think they won or they almost beat Bama to go to the uh, you're right. SEC championship. And all the Florida fans were tweeting out like, "Oh man, you know we had originally wanted Frost, and I'm so glad we didn't get him. I'm glad that we got Dan Mullen because we're you know look at Nebraska yeah. and look at us. And then it just takes you know two years and, and he's gone. Yep, hundred percent. So. Um, it is going to be interesting where some of these, you know, who some of these schools are going to end up with as coach. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of openings right now, um, which might make it a good thing that we held on to Frost because it is there, there'd be a and lot that of battling. Maybe what Trev was thinking because there was already a USC LSU. Yep. You know, well, and you go back to the restructuring of Frost's contract. They did that with Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. They did. Th- they're doing that now with Tim Allen or Tim Allen. Tom, they, <laughs> Tom, with Tom they Allen. They better be doing it with Tom Allen. They're doing it with because Tom Allen because ended the last place in the yeah, East. I mean, Indiana just folded this year. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, yeah, Florida. Yes, Florida went six and six. Uh, but yeah, this is not a year to look for a new coach. And so I'm glad that we restructured. But look what what happened to Michigan. Didn't they get a new offense coordinator too? Possibly. And, I mean, look what sure. look what changed their season. I mean, their offense was so much better. Uh, thanks, Jamie. Have a good day, buddy. Um, their their game their game plan and their offense was so much better than what it's been in previous years. And they went out and they said, "Hey, our run game is working against Ohio State. They can't stop it. I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah. And I'm going to keep doing it. We're going to rush for six touchdowns today against Ohio State, and we're going to be able to throw the deep ball against their cornerbacks. Boom. Yeah. Success. I mean, right. that that game was it was such a good game. But at no point in that game did I feel like Ohio State was going to win. Or two that Ohio State had any control in that game to come back and win. I, I would and say no going into the game after Ohio State's game against Mi- Michigan State last week, I know that was at home and this game was at you know at the Big House. But five you know five losses in a row for Harbaugh and, and this you yep. know, never beaten Ohio State. I'd say everything kind of was in, looking good for Ohio State. Cheers, Troy. We'll get there. And um, but yeah, I mean right away, yeah, with the, the way the game started, I was like. Gonna take something special for so Ohio State I, to win this game. I think I mean Ashley's like, oh, is Ohio State already rolling? And you're like, no, actually, Michigan's winning. You know, seven to three Michigan when I turned was, it on. Michigan was winning at that time, and right after I said they were about to go up two scores, they threw an interception yeah. like at the goal line. But yeah, I think 
you know, I, I think it's for, for Nebraska getting a hiring offense coordinator that's gonna that's a proven power five offense coordinator. Yeah. Even a previous Big Ten off, offense coordinator would be huge. Yeah. A lot of talks about like Tom Herman uh, could be a good hire for an offense coordinator. Yeah, he did it at Ohio where's, State. Where's he at now? I think he's unemployed right now. Or is I don't he know. got an NFL assistant job or something? No, I, no idea. But I mean that could jump. Start him into, get, a, into another role. That's you get a good because when he was at Ohio State, they were good. Yeah, you get a good offense coordinator. You get a special teams coordinator, not a damn analyst. You need a coordinator so bad. Um, you need someone that can coach and teach those uh, specialists to get their get out of their own heads and start doing what they know they can do and what we know they can do. Right. This um, analyst stuff is just BS. Yes, <laughs> Queen Blakeman. Queen Blakeman. Shut up, Tim. Tim. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> but I also think. Uh, uh, that offensive line. I thought our offensive line did pretty good against Iowa. They were not bad. They gave Logan time. Um, they were better than they have been. Anyway. Yeah, they, they did pretty good in that game. So, But we need someone who can really coach them up, develop them. And then Ron Brown needs to stay with the running backs, coach the running backs. Uh, he does a great job. Hire him on as a full-time coach and coach those running backs. Our running game was much better this last game. Well, and I saw, you know, I think it was Adam Carriker was like, this Logan Smothers, uh, Jacques Yant combo, yeah, could be something real special in a few years. Or could something, be, you know, it, or you know, could be something that we see a lot of, or you know, whatever. Well, I think again, we have Marvin Scott. Uh, I thought Brody Belt was—he's a great guy coming out of the backfield right. too. Yeah. He had a great game uh, and hell of a catch by Levi Falk on the sideline that they called no catch. Um, hell of a catch though. Right. I mean, that was a really good catch. Uh, great hands. I thought he had it, but well, uh, and even thing, even too. I mean, Gabe Urban. I mean, he yeah. technically only played four games. <laughs> yeah. He was starting every, running first ever, back. like, true freshman started running back. So, you know, as long as everything goes well with his recovery, yeah. you know, looking ahead to next year, it'd be pretty good. So, kind of staying on next year, I think when we look at defense, and we know who we're losing on defense. A lot. We're losing Deontay. We're losing Cam Taylor. Uh, we're going to be Jojo, losing Jojo, Stilly, Stilly Daniels. Daniels. But... As much as that seems like a lot, this muke. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan says Brody's a Swiss Army knife. Dude, I love Brody Bell. I, we talked about him last week. I, I'm, I love. Him I guy. think the thing think about great. him that like caught our eye was at the spring game that we yeah. went to. Yes. We were like, oh man, that guy's like, you know, we even said it like he's like a little Rex. Yeah. And uh, but I was like, I don't know. There's so many higher profile guys in front yeah. of him. I don't think we'll ever see him really. But we, we did. seen him a lot more than I was ever expected. Yep. Um, yeah, we're losing DeAndre Thomas as well, so oh, we're, we're, right. we're losing yeah. we're losing some good guys on defense. But what I what I know we have we have Nash uh, who played and he goes up against Cam Jurgens is what they said um, uh, and That'd practice be a, every day. Probably be a pretty good matchup to watch. We still have Ty Robinson. Ty Robinson's polar bear, bro. Yeah, beast. So well, Nash is polar bear technically. Yeah, I guess. Um, but I think we have. Uh, the defensive line is something I still think needed work this year. It's something where we weren't getting a lot of pressure on the quarterback from our line. We do have Flidarius Payne still. Uh, he's more of an outside linebacker. But, he, but still, he can um, play down. We he got play. Jordan Riley. He was playing. Yeah, Jordan Riley. Do we still have? Jordan Riley, they say he's like 325 pounds. He's, he's huge. He looked like he was about 260. Is, uh, is Damian Jackson? Is yeah. I, think, I, I haven't said he's leaving. He wasn't really in that video. game, but... Um, and Ross, yes, uh, Cam Taylor mentioned that he is leaving, so he's he done. He did. Uh, he's going. To no, make, he's going uh, to get that money back. Like you said, Payne, uh, Caleb Tanner, who had a really good game aside from swinging at the ref. Yeah. Well, which, it, okay. Here, here's my deal with that. Ref, don't touch the player. All yeah. they they were just chit chatting. You to come in and grab his arm and move him away. Yeah. You had no business doing that. Well, so. and then in the game yesterday, what the Alabama game or which game was it that the. the or no, it was Ohio State. Yeah. Well, didn't somebody like tackle a ref or something? You text me about um, one of the games, and I was getting home from the store, and I didn't see it. Uh, I can't remember. A ref got knocked down or something, and there was yeah. no flag. Oh yeah, it was the Ohio State Michigan game. Yeah. The amount of jawing and the amount of uh, fist flying in that game, and then I'm like, oh man, we would have got so many penalties in that game. That's for sure. Um, Especially when they're freaking going at it at halftime. Yeah. In the tunnels. Yep. So, um, yeah, I think. You know, we have a lot, and Quentin Newsom played great. We got Braxton Clark. We got uh, Marquise Buford. We have guys, and, and we saw Farmer. North Pole Gates. Farmer. North Pole Gates. Farmer. Far Farmer's a step behind. He is, and that hurt not having Deontay in that game. It did. Because it did. there was a couple plays that down the stretch really hurt. And 
long run to lead their team, yeah. you know, to get their last touchdown was. Yep, I, I think I think he's, he's just he's got some work to do on his angles, um, but I still think I still think he, he'll be fine. He, he's well, gonna he be has fine. been good. He's had interceptions because he's been in the right place yeah. and, and stuff like that. So I, yeah, he's just a step slow. There's gonna be a, a small drop off on defense, but I don't think as big as people think. Still got Garrett Nelson. I, I think uh, we still have our line. Gifford's our, kind of the next JoJo. Well. Um, well, yeah, we'll have Gifford, we'll still have uh, Henrich, we we'll still have Luke Reimer. Reimer. Those guys had like um, hundreds of, they had like Gunnarsson. hundreds of tackles this year. Yeah, we still have Blake, uh, Blake Gunnarsson, Blake Gunnarsson as well. Yeah, yeah so Casey Rogers, Casey, Casey Rogers, Rogers. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have Fedoni, we're going to have, yeah, Teddy on the O-line, we're going to have Fedoni yeah, on hopefully offense. Hopefully Teddy comes back better than yeah. ever. Fedoni and Volklek on offense. Uh, we're missing, we're really only losing, what, Toure and Allen. Um, Allen. As far as offensive weapons, right? Which, of course, those are big weapons. Sichterman on the O line. Sichterman, but again, I'm not talking about too many O line guys because they haven't been a huge strength for right, us. So, right. um, and then Adrian Martinez. Um, Who knows? Nothing's been said. He was featured in their senior video, but it doesn't that doesn't always mean that he's leaving. He also has not made an announcement. I'm going to guess we will hear something on him in the next couple of days. Probably. Um, you know, I, it would, and maybe he. Had his mind made up already. Maybe he didn't. I bet he does. May, well, he, pro- he probably does now. But going into that game, you know, let's say Smothers goes in there and just can't do anything, and we get a goose egg. Yep. I think he might be like, well, <laughs> I might come back next year. Yep. You know. But the fact Smothers, Smothers takes him down the field, scores a touchdown right away, yeah. and you know, played as well as he did, and obviously not well enough to win. But I think that that might be, you know, even may- maybe he'll try to. And go to the portal and see if he can play somewhere. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe he still wants to play football another year. Maybe he's had so many injuries, maybe he's done. Yeah. You know, hard to say. Yeah, I, I just don't know. Um, yeah, going back to that ref thing. So, uh, yeah, so Casey, after that, uh, OSU player ripped the helmet off of the Wolverine player. Apparently, the Wolverine guy was twisting the ankle of the receiver. Um, and he, or corner. And he went up and just really just kept ripping at the helmet until it came off. Ref is standing right there. There's no flags thrown. Uh, there they was, had a lot of stuff. There was a ref game. knocked over. Um, other refs were being shoved out of the way. I mean, it was just pandemonium. And I, I mean, there should have been a, a couple ejections there at least. I'm surprised they let 26 play. I don't know if 26 saw the field the rest of the game, but he should have been kicked out of the game. I mean, that was. I mean, you're trying to rip a guy's head off. Right. Well, but either and way, going back yeah. to the game, the, you know, the Iowa game. You know, every every time, you know, no, no calls ever go our way. But the <laughs> pass interference call on Cam Taylor Britt, it, it was it, it was it was like a JoJo Doman penalty against Michigan. Yeah. Like, there's nothing there. Yeah. And everyone says there's nothing there, and it. You know, Even the announcer said there was nothing there. It was like a yeah. it was a third down play that led to a first down that led to a touchdown that, you know, changed the outcome of the game. Big time. Yeah. So I mean, again, and what refs about? aside, they also, you know. Didn't give Iowa their touchdown, which it was. It should have been a touchdown, <laughs> in my mind. Uh, he came down to the ground with control once he hit the ground. Oh, I mean, you have to maintain control. Like it's different than the NFL a little bit. I was I, surprised they overturned that. I was very surprised they overturned it since they called it a touchdown on the it's, field. But and especially that it was against us. No, and uh, it was against us. But but yeah, I you know, I think I'm looking forward to next year. Right. I, whether Martinez is back or not. If we haven't, again, we have a really good offensive line. No one's talking about bench Martinez. No one's talking about don't come back Martinez. Because right. people are saying if we would have had an offensive line, a healthy offensive line, and a good offensive line, Martinez would have been up for the Heisman this year. Guaranteed. Well, and we would have won that game. We would have won for sure. We would have won a lot of games. But yeah. the fact that we didn't, and the fact that we don't know what next year looks like, if and we are huge Adrian Martinez fans, uh, supporters, always have been, um, have never really been on the on the bench Martinez bandwagon. We did say what well, last year we're like, let's go ahead and give uh, McCaffrey a try. <laughs> yeah. we, we and we were all for it, but and we, we also did. saw what happened. And then never we like, saw what happened. Never put him back in. Um, and, that kind of sparked Adrian. Um, yeah, and he was much better after that. Yeah, and, and so a lot of, a lot of people again, Adrian played injured pretty much all year, and we talked about. If he's playing injured and we're not bringing in Logan Smothers, what does that tell you about the development of our quarterbacks? What is that right. scare? Actually, scares me thinking about uh, Harvard. And I'm glad he's only a freshman. Yeah, and exactly. a redshirt. a redshirt. So I'm glad and because Logan could technically have still been a redshirt. Yeah. but whatever. So let's 
let's get a good QB coach, like Jonathan says. We got to get a good QB coach. So offense coordinator, QB coach, special teams. I mean, those should probably be the top, be the top three um, priorities going into next year. If we, I, I if we get those, high, and you have to do it right, throw the know, money, spend the money to you, do it. I mean, obviously, special teams cost us so many games this year, but. Offensive coordinator is probably something somebody that you're gonna to want to go for pretty quick, just so that guys yes. are. Well, because other people are gonna be hiring other, the coaches. Other people are gonna be hiring coaches. As far as special teams go, I think you got to get that going. Well, not not only that. The reason why I would say offensive is probably our our biggest um, hire that we need to do is because even with the blunders on special teams, if we had a better offense coordinator, I think we still win at least right. four or five of those games then, we lost. We're not averaging 17 points a game exactly. in, in Big Ten play and losing 20, and, 21, 17, 23, 17, and putting 26, up, 17. And putting up 500 yards, 500 right. to 560 yards. I mean, yeah. you can't put up that many yards and not score. And that's you can't have that bad of a for red years. zone. Like, I our mean, red zone's awful. That first year under Frost, I think we had, like, six games in a row of over 500 yards, but we were only scoring, like, yeah. 21 points those games. Our red zone was awful. All we were doing yeah. was kicking field goals. So. Exactly. Um, offense has to be number one. Special teams, I still say, is probably third or fourth, but we got to get a guy in there, someone dedicated to it. I'm sorry, Mike Dawson is not doing a good job on special teams, like Frost said, because um, we're still seeing the problems. He's, he's not. And it, you're saying it's a specialist problem. Well, on that punt, it wasn't a specialist problem. It was a blocking problem. We let yeah. a guy run free. I mean, that, you can't do that. So. Well, and how many different punters, how many different field goal kickers do we use throughout the season? I mean – if you have one kid that you know either gets hurt or you know is struggling, make a change. We make a change back to a kid that we had so many problems with. Yeah. I mean the that surname he had a good punt. That was the first punt he had since the Michigan State punt that they took yeah. back for a touchdown. Yeah. And the only reason it was because uh, I can never say his name had like a twenty-five had, had like a, a 30 thirty-yard <laughs> punt. And it was like, damn, we should have just even, we should have just gone for it then. Yeah. We seriously should have just gone for it on fourth down yeah. every single time throughout the entire game. Every time. No matter field position, just go for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Donnie, Donnie's all in the Dan Mullen train here for offense coordinator. Um, again, I don't know what kind of relationships that those guys have. Maybe they do. That's not a bad hire, though. And, um, you know, someone also mentioned, too, like, why is that, why are people so diehard in getting a Nebraska alumni I'm to not. come and coach? I, I don't care. I don't I'm care not. if they played, care. coached against, coached for. I want someone that's going to come in here and change the offense, help us be better, score more points, and be effective and win those close right. games and where it, you have two minutes to win the game. How many games, four or five this year, where we had the right. possession last time to go down and score mm-hmm. and we didn't do it? I want someone to say, hey, we have a two-minute offense, three-minute offense. We're going to burn the clock. We're going to get down. We're going to score and not give the team another chance to get the ball back or score. Well, and maybe you know, maybe it is somebody like Damo and someone that you know, maybe isn't quite good enough to be a head coach. At, you know, an SEC school, that may have been a really good offensive coordinator. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, look at Tom Herman. Tom yeah, Herman is not a great head coach. And look at Steve Sarkeesian. Sarkeesian. Not a good head coach. But guess what? Good they are a good coordinator. offense coordinator. Right. Uh, well, you see that all the time in college football. So People have even said hire Bill Callahan as an offensive line coach. He's a great offensive line yeah. coach. Um, and I'm, <laughs> I had to go off on somebody on Twitter today, Jonathan. You mentioned Wandale Robinson having a good year. He did have a good year. Listen, he's, he's yeah, playing. thousand yards. Yeah, and too bad he's still not around. I had to, I had to go into somebody. There's this guy on Twitter who called himself. It was uh, Husker Wandale or something like that. Uh, now he just goes by Husker Wan, and he's just kind of a, uh, I don't know, he's not a, I don't like the guy. I think he's, he lives in the past too much, and he talks a lot of crap, and just always so negative. I, what I want to see, and someone posted too about the fan base, like, there's so much negativity from the fan base that people always have to be right about what they believe. It's not about being right or wrong, just support your team. I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and say Jimmy and I are right about everything or wrong about everything, like, we think we analyze the games pretty good. We think we have good um, comments about the games, but if people don't agree good with dialogue, us, good dialogue, if you will. Yeah, good dialogue. There's but if some people guys, don't believe with us. It's yeah. fine. Well, and there's and there's players that we've met that we like that we might criticize at times. Yep. Maybe we used to criticize them. Maybe we do now again. I don't know. But that doesn't. We're just talking. It's not like we're going on and talking about how we shouldn't care about this yeah. team anymore well, like, or, like I told well them, they're gonna lose anyway it doesn't matter yeah. I don't even know why you watch the game well, and, and that that's the negativity I'm talking about like even someone posted on there and you knew the comments were gonna come it was 
why are you even hopeful for next year after seeing what we're going to lose and we don't even know who we're bringing in as yeah. far as coordinators? I'm like, why do you, you know? watch the game and then post? Yeah. You, like, when the game ended, I put my phone on Do Not Disturb <laughs> and yeah. didn't talk to anybody the rest of the day pretty much. You're posting to get negative responses. And it was there was a lot of negativity. It's like, why are you... Why are you egging that on? Like, why are, there's so much uh, negativity, but then you see 90,000 people show up on game day. Yeah, I know. I mean, there's and, – and people are like, yeah, there's nothing else to do in Nebraska. I mean, what else are you doing on college football Saturday? I'm watching college football. Yeah. Like, whether I'm at the game or not, I'm still watching. So, I don't care. I And that's just – I mean, we're, we're fans of football, so it just is what that's it is. That's just kind of what we've done. Yeah, the whole but I, I think majority of uh, fans on Twitter that are negative are such a small portion – but sometimes it just drives you nuts because it's like, you, why do you just preach negativity all the time when these kids, you know they're playing their hearts out. They're not trying to lose. Well, and I'm not going to lie. It's not just Husker fans because when the Michigan-Ohio State game, I was following Twitter. Yeah. And when the game ended, people were like, I'm done with Ryan Day. Ryan Day had never <laughs> lost a Big Ten game in like three or four seasons, however long he's been there. It, that was his first Big Ten loss, yeah. and that was only like his third ever loss. Yeah. And people are like, I'm done with him. He doesn't know how to run this team properly. And I'm just like, well, at least uh, it's not just us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're talking like yeah. one of the best coaches and the best programs in the country. Yeah, yeah. So I, that was pretty funny. But um, you know, one thing that Donnie mentions here is he's he's uh, afraid about the transfer portal for the Huskers. You know, I don't know. I think I think we're gonna find out a lot about some players and some maybe even culture again that we've talked about how these guys feel about when we say we're close. Do they believe that? Yep. Do they feel it? Are they guys that are gonna be going out and producing? Who are we gonna? We're gonna lose well, people. And we're are, gonna lose people. You know, maybe they're a player that was a four-star recruit that that hasn't really seen the field much, or yep. you know, um, hasn't really cracked ahead of some, you know some of those super seniors or something yeah. like you know yeah. maybe kind of took some of their playing time that they thought they could have had or should have had yeah and now they're wanting to move on maybe they don't yeah maybe they don't agree but yeah no. and, and so so we might i mean you're, you're gonna lose people every year every year you're gonna see transfers. everyone's gonna lose people uh, every year yes i'm curious about who we're gonna lose but i also feel like on the defensive side of the ball we're gonna get javin right he had an injury I think he's going to be uh, seeing some playing time. Uh, I know Polo Gates had an injury as well. Right. One thing about Jacques Yant as well, I don't know if you know this, but he was almost kicked off the team. He so, was almost kicked off the team because Frost asked him to do something. He told him no. He said, take your shoulder pads off, go in the locker room, and we'll chat. We'll talk after the game. I mean, if people want to know why Yant wasn't out there. Last week? That In previous weeks. It, it's, been, it's been, it was after uh, maybe Michigan or something. But that's why we didn't see a lot of Yant. I'm sorry. If you are going to be that guy on the team who's going to refuse to do what you um, are asked to do by the coach, and anybody that plays sports, guess what? Your ass is getting benched. You're not playing. That's why he saw limited time. So apparently he did something between now and this last game to start seeing the field some more. But you, you can't expect guys to just be given an opportunity if you don't earn the opportunity, yeah. which is why we saw Wyatt Lieber, Levi Falk, uh, Brody right. Belt, all these other guys playing because they earned that opportunity to play. Right. And I mean, it is kind of frustrating because Betts is probably one of the better players and you don't really see him much, but then you're seeing King of Johnson on the other side for Iowa yep. that I didn't like. <laughs> um, yeah. And, you know, you'd like to see Betts out there and, you know, he probably needs to make some improvements, whether it's in the classroom or, you know, the playbook. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Betts either, but again, I'm not the coach. I'm not in the locker room. I'm not on the Great sideline. Great talent. We'd really love to see him out there. That's really yeah. all. Yeah. Hopefully he gets more playing time next year. Um, Donnie says we've been staying close for three years now. I don't know we've been staying close for three years, Donnie. This year, absolutely. I mean, the last couple of years, I mean. There may have been people we've saying had some blowouts. that uh, we're closer. <laughs> and maybe people were saying we were close. No, I think but really I think, they meant we were closer. We're not as bad as we were with Riley <laughs> or the big blowouts yeah. like we did. Now, I think Frost. This is the first year I'd say that we were actually close. I think Frost has kept saying we're close for the last three well, years. Well, because but, he sees it every day, yeah. and then this is kind of what yeah. he's been seeing. He yep. just haven't been able to get over the phone. Yeah. So. And so I think this year, closer, I think, when it comes to winning those games. We've been blown out a couple of times the last few years with Frost, and 
now we're not getting blown out, but we did lose games we shouldn't have lost. So, yeah, um, Jonathan mentioned uh, Nick Saban's rant about fans the other day too. Did you hear about? Did you hear that? I think I saw it, and I didn't. I think I kind of listened to it, so I didn't. What did he say? So basically, fans are mad because they're not blowing teams out every game. I mean, he was spot on. He's like, you know, these kids are coming out and playing. They're still winning games. They but shouldn't have won yet last night. But the yeah. fans are always going to want more. The fans are always going right. to want uh, more points, uh, more blowouts. But the fact Especially that they're winning when games, you win those so expectations, many in a row and you have that high of expectations. That's what I said. It's hard to win football games in college, and we've seen it. We've seen the mayhem this year. We've seen how many we, upsets. We kinda, we, I mean, we, not necessarily us, but Husker fans were kind of that way. Like. You know, when Nebraska was, you know, really good in top 15, top 20 every year. Yeah. And you're playing South Dakota State, you know, with Taylor Martinez winning 21-7 to seven mm -hmm. after a, you know, lucky interception yeah. taken back for a touchdown yeah. that got called back. I mean, we were all thinking the same thing. Like, man, we should be blowing these teams yep. out, and we're not. Yep. So, like, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, Dal also. Dalton says coach needs to manage the game better, play playing some apps. I mean, it's a lot of these games have come down to game management. We've seen some of that over the last few years. Again, you, you hand the offensive play calling off to somebody else as the head coach, and you, you manage the game. That, that's what you should do is manage the game. Um, I agree with that. Someone, uh, William, asked about seeing Eric uh, Barrier from Eastern Washington in Nebraska. Sure. I don't even know who that is, but I think either, Eastern Washington, I think they had a pretty good year this year. They so typically are pretty good. I think they have a pretty good school. offense from what I've seen. Vets uh, having trouble with the playbook, says Rosh, and outside blocking schemes. Yep getting better and better so yeah next year could be a turn for him so again the process nice. mentioned it from day one if you're a receiver and you can't block you're probably not going to see the field yeah. so Betts gets better at blocking he's going to see the field more he's going to get the ball more he's going to score more Alante Brown I think I think he's more of a slot guy but he still has to block he's still got to be a blocker too yeah. so um but it's been nice seeing him well, out in the field more and more I mean, but he is a guy that maybe could transfer but yeah I hope I he mean, stays when you when you get opportunities you got to make you know you got to catch the ball I'm yeah not, Singling them out for anything in particular, but you just gotta. It's every man that putt return, whatever. Yeah, you gotta do something. I don't know. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Again, I, I told your, uh, I told your dad, uh, Papa John, that um, we'll be drinking the Kool Aid here again. Uh, the the, the Kool Aid in about in about maybe two months, we're gonna start drinking Kool Aid again. When did you tell him that? Uh, yesterday. Oh, you saw him yesterday? Yeah, no, no, he commented on Instagram, but um, <laughs> yeah. Your dad's on Instagram. Oh, okay. He follows us, but um, you know, I think you know, and fans are too. Any fans that are even mad now, I think that Kool Aid drinking is going to start again soon enough. Um, and we'll be excited about. And I'm excited about next season. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm ready to be done with this year. Forget about it. Yep. Push it behind us, and see what we got going forward. So, um, Will Honus, Dalton, I think he's done. Will Honus was in that video too, the senior video. Was, was he in that? Yeah. Uh, I, I think Honus is done. It sucks, um, man, because he did have a lot of promise. He just had too many injuries. Yeah, I mean, two two seasons where he was injured. Um, I don't see him coming back, but I would love it if he did. Um, yeah. Manning is going to be a highlight reel next year. Prediction if he stays. So I think again, no announcement from Omar. Uh, but if he stays, fantastic. Just stay healthy, man. Get back on the yeah. field because you're a beast. Uh, yep, Gabe Irv, We talked about him. I'll him check. You know, in order. Um, yeah. Because he was actually. <laughs> He produced more than I thought he would after yep. hearing how much, hearing all the hype about him last year and him doing nothing. Yeah. Like literally had like one target. Well, um, I think it was all just mental health last year. Right? And he produced a lot more than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Jonathan says, depending on who the new offense coordinator is, we may be we may really be drinking the Kool Aid. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, that's actually get pretty in. well put. A Ooh. lot of people will be. Thank Jonathan. Thanks for the info. So uh, Honus put in for a medical waiver. Oh, there you go. So if he gets a medical waiver, we could see him back, um, which, would be, that, which would be fantastic. That would get accepted, but um, but I do think with the COVID and just a lot of different things, I feel like that should go through. I think from a, from a leadership standpoint, from what we have for Doman, you saw the last two games without Doman, kind of where our linebackers were. Now, not to say that Luke Reimer and these and Henrich and the other guys can't pull up that that captain role, but Doman just brought so much. I think Honus is that next. Captain yeah. on the D that's going to help them get to that next step. Yeah. And, I mean, he just had and, such a good year in 2020. Probably Gifford after that. Mm -hmm. oh, Reimer. And yeah, still Blake, Blake Gunnerson. Uh, Gunnerson's had some good plays Garrett there, too. Uh, yeah. Garrett Nelson. And then um, 
man, there's another guy. You just can't think of his name. But um, I mean, we got we got guys on D. I think our defense is going to be fine. Not worried about our D moving forward. I just want our offense to start getting some of that steam moving forward, getting more points on the board, and win those close games when you get the ball back. Two minutes left. Let's run a two-minute offense. You're almost guaranteed to score. I just I never had that confidence with Nebraska. I see other teams on the get the ball. Two minutes left. I'm like, man, minute 43 for uh, Alabama. You left way too much damn time on the clock. Right. Like, what do you think in Auburn? Like you just knew that Alabama was going down and score. You just can't run out of bounds. And we don't have a. T- we you haven't have had a to team. Stand bounds there and win the game. But we haven't had a team that could do that in a long time. Yeah. A two minute two minute offense in the NFL, you're almost guaranteed to at least get a field goal, right? Well you see it in we, college football too. We typically in those spots are down by three or down by seven. Yep. And we throw an interception. Thanks, or Tommy. we get down to the you know, interception at the goal line or get stopped on fourth down at the goal line. Yep. Um <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. pretty frustrating. Yeah, That's I do. I do think Dalton says Caleb Tanner is the next stud. I think he's yes. been a stud. I think he's going to continue. He's got what two years left. I was actually surprised he even played after being down last week. Yeah, and he got a concussion, but <laughs> he was down for a long time last week. Yeah, yeah. So it was good to see him back. I think uh, I think he's done well. I think he's going to continue to do well. I think he cleans up some of those. Um, penalties that he's had that just seem like maybe unnecessary but again I think he's a stud um, excited to see him back next year and a lot of the other guys so that's all I got man I'm, I got. I'm just I'm you know it was a rough season it was again appreciate you guys sticking with us uh, joining in as much as you did uh, a lot of you guys we see almost week in week out uh, it's been another great year for two average guys we're not done uh, we'll figure out what our next steps are as far as um, bring you some more info this year, whether yeah. it's signing day stuff or um, or even just college football playoff. playoff. I mean, I, I will tell you, so I mentioned, I think, our first show this year. I almost thought about telling Jimmy I'm calling it. Like, did, I'm done. I just I started to kind of lose that feeling for college football, that love for college football. When we started the show, it was college football. It was all teams. We and talked we about, talked about the Nebraska game at the yep, end of the show. Um, and we just weren't really – no one really paid attention. So we flipped to Nebraska. But one thing that yesterday did for me, seeing as many good games were on yesterday and rivalry week, it kind of like gave me that spark of like, wow, like I want to watch other teams play now. Yeah. Because I have I zero vested o- interest. I want to watch Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and watch Oklahoma State. Yeah. Play. I mean, there, there, were some, there were some really good games yesterday. Just I was like, man, like this is fun. Mm-hmm. College football was fun yesterday. And even though my team wasn't had not won a lot this year, it was fun to be able to see these other teams play on the field and be like, hey, we, oh yes, we were that close to playing games like this and winning games like that. And th- we didn't have a guy rush for five touchdowns against us. No. We, we only we gave didn't, up six points to Ohio State in the second half. Your, your potential Heisman winner, Walker the third, which to me is my front runner, we gave up 67 yards. Yeah. 67 yards. So, you know. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> and C.J. Stroud, I mean, he completed probably a, a pretty good percentage of his passes against us. You yep. know, probably 70 plus percentage. Yep. But they didn't score any touchdowns in the second half against us. Yeah. They had to use a late field goal to extend the lead so that we couldn't get within. We, we did, again, we did so many damn good things this year, which is why it's kind of like golf. In golf, you have one good shot. You're like, damn, I'm coming back next weekend to play. And you, still, you just can't get over that, or you don't have that good shot again, but you have another good shot. It just keeps coming back. It's kind of like, man, I'm done playing. And then yeah. you have a nice shot, and you're like, all right, golf's fun again. Yeah, it's, just, it's that, I don't know, you just can't, I can't pull myself away from this team. I can't, I never I will. I um, but it was a fun year, guys. So we'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do, not only the rest of this year, but uh, hopefully make some changes for next year, some positive things. We get down to more games, maybe. Uh, maybe go to Ireland. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, but we'll figure it out. So thank you guys for tuning in. Yep. Uh, again, I'm Matt. I'm Jimmy. We're two average guys. Cheers. Enjoy your Sunday. Watch some NFL. Enjoy championship games next weekend on Saturday. Enjoy the college football playoff. Day. You'll see us before the college football playoff. We'll make something happen. All right. So, Sounds good. Go Big Red. See you next time.